Ian Whiteley, The Rats of 214 Oxford Street. It was always so tricky in that building, handy for harbourage and every convenience, but it was the noise, those blasted DJs spinning house from 10 till 10 and later on launch nights and even then there was no peace. Cleaners, stockists, visual merchandisers fussing till first tube, which was why from Britpop to Brexit they huddled in cavity walls and ceilings, breeding and feeding and hiding and thieving till everything stopped overnight. Everyone just vanished and they couldn't put their claws on why. Still, the quiet flushed them out to this six-tier explosion of suede neon and impossibly chiselled mannequins which were first to get weed on. They ratted the hair salon on the lower ground floor, dip-dyed their whiskers, span round in barber chairs, sugared their ratty brows. Across the way, they raticured nails in rose gold and mint, left trails as they skittered the stairs. In menswear, they savaged spray-on jeans, took one leg per tail, got grills for their front incisors. The stupid ones pierced their tongues. Word got round and as the bins on Oxford Street emptied, neighbours all the way to Regent Street Cinema joined the throngs of ratus fashionistas gnawing cute tubs of frosting, tapioca bubbles and endless racks of leather. This was the flagship of all rat ships, 90,000 square feet of overconsumption feasting on the fabric of slave labour and falling apart at the seams. Conditions became unsanitary, the building unsafe and boss rats scuttled off with their pensions. Yet on they gnawed and writhed and chewed through straps and shoes, fabrics, man bags, crazed and ravenous, unable to stop, unwilling, spilling through doors, windows, floors, to Bond Street, South Moulton, Mayfair, the sewers below.